Good day, everyone, and God bless you. I apologize for being away so long. Uh, did I miss anything? Just kidding. You know, 2020 was a rough year for me, as I know it was for most of you. I was out of work for nine months. I got the Rona. And I lost two people that I cared about. I lost one to pancreatic cancer two days before Thanksgiving. And I lost the other to, well, it was either Jesus or Trump. I'm not sure which, but one of them caused him to cut off all communication with me without warning, without explanation, ending a 20-year friendship. And I am sad about that. But there's not much I can do about it except to wish him well. But you know one phrase that has been deleted from my lexicon? It can't get any worse. And frankly, I was astounded at how many people kept saying how much they would enjoy New Year's Eve. Getting to say goodbye and good riddance to 2020. They thought that 2021 was going to be so much better. Just because, I don't know, we're using a new calendar now? Well, congratulations, folks. 2021 is here. And everything's all better now. Right? What's really changed? To, to be honest, I don't know that things are going to get better anytime soon. In fact, I think they will get worse before they get better. Especially for the church. Especially for God's people. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been thinking about how comparatively good people can get caught up in the fallout from other people's sins and bad behaviors. Now, obviously, no one is, is good the, the way God is good. Obviously, we are all sinners. God's word is very clear on that. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But when the Israelites staked out the promised land and, and 10 out of the 12 spies said, we, we can't take this land. We're, we're not strong enough. That The people over there, they, they are like giants. Most of the crowd actually went with them. And they doomed themselves to traveling the desert for the rest of their lives, for 40 years. Only Joshua and Caleb had a positive outlook and said, yes, we can, we can do this, let's do this. But were Joshua and Caleb the only two people in all of Israel who were willing to go in and take that land? I, I don't know, they're the only two who are mentioned. Maybe there were a handful of citizens who believed that God would deliver on his promises. They're, they're just not mentioned in the Bible. But if there were, they died in the desert just like the rest. But how about 40 years later, when Israel finally did take the land, how about the Canaanites and the Hittites and, and the Jebusites and all the other ites that God told Israel to wipe out when they finally did take the land? Now, if you, if you remember, God said to kill everything, to completely um, purge, to purify that land. Kill the men, the women, the children, even the animals. Now, was every single organism living in that land a sworn enemy of Jehovah? I, I don't know. Maybe there were some comparatively innocent people living in that land, but because of everyone else surrounding them, they got caught up. Their lives were affected by the consequences 
of everyone else's sin in that land. Or how about a couple of centuries later, when Israel had completely turned their back on God, not even wanting a judge, wanting a king because they just wanted to be like everybody else. Does that sound familiar? And then they started engaging in behavior that was even worse than the people God commanded them to wipe out. And then they had to be carried off into captivity to Babylon. Was, was every single Israelite sacrificing their children in the fire? I don't know. There might have been a few who still hadn't succumbed to the spirit of the age. There may still have been a few Israelites who were loyal, who were devoted to God. But they got sent into exile just the same. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this to depress you. I'm not saying this to get you even more upset. In fact, my motivations are, are quite the opposite. I'm saying this to provide some measure of empathy for you. Because I have a good feeling that there's a lot of folks, not only in the United States, but worldwide, who are doing what they know that they should do. And yet, all of, all of this still keeps happening to us. I'm, I'm sure Job could identify. And I'm sure we can now identify better with Job. And similarly, I wouldn't blame you if you were just as angry with God right now as Job was when he was going through his trial. I mean, I am. And similarly, you may be tempted to curse God and die, like Job's wife advised him. Or more to the point, you might just be thinking of throwing this whole God thing out the window giving up on God and saying, look, I've tried my best. It's not working. God obviously doesn't care about me, so I'm not going to care about him. I'm just going to go off and I'm going to live however I want. It's less stress. It's less work. And it's more fun. So that's how I'm going to live. I'm just going to do what I want. That sounds like a popular choice. It sounds like a good choice. But can I ask you instead to please, please, just hang in there, even for just another day, for the remainder of today, whichever day you're watching this, keep at it. Stay in prayer, stay in the Word, stay in God's will. Talk to God. Yell at God if you have to. If you have resentments against God, I'm asking you, please tell God about your resentments against Him. I do. And the reason why I'm asking this of you is that being in God's will is still the best and safest place to be. Now, please hear me. You'll notice I didn't say perfect. I said best. And I didn't say safe. I said safest. The only completely perfect, completely safe place is in heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, we are not there yet. We live in a sinful, broken world where life is not fair. Not for the just, not for the unjust. Now, I've never read it, but I am told that the big book of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, begins with the sentence, Life is difficult. That's page one, paragraph one, sentence one. And that book was written decades ago. Folks, it, it's kind of hard to remember now, but life was difficult in 2019. It got more difficult in 2020. And it pains me to say this, I think it will get worse in 2021 for the just and the unjust. And now is not the time to walk away from God. There really never is a good time to walk away from God, but now especially is the time to lean in like your very life depends on it and to get into the scriptures daily. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please, please hear me. I say this in love. It doesn't matter how bad life gets. When you live apart from God, it can get worse. Either through the natural consequences of our own selfishness and stupidity, or maybe it's God trying to correct us, trying to put up that electric fence saying, don't go that way. You think things are bad now. If you continue to go this way, they are going to get absolutely devastating. Sometimes pain can be a gift. It can be a sign that we're going the wrong way in life. And thankfully, for those of us who are in a relationship with Christ, death is not the worst thing that can happen to us. It is a graduation. It is a 360-degree upgrade of our existence. We get a new body and a new mind. And if you have nothing else to look forward to in your life, look forward to that. Because it may be 2021, but God is still sovereign. Throughout everything that is happening, as hard as it seems to be to believe, God still loves you. And he is still taking you to heaven when Jesus returns. And all of this will be like a forgotten dream. I thank you all for listening. God bless you.